to the uh, list of review topics for the test tomorrow as chosen by second hour. So who's got a concept question for me? Yes? Intersection point is a great is a great one. And when we're talking about different times, different times is the easiest problem to make up because to make them hit at the same time is actually quite difficult. But if you look at, let's say you have an x, y equal to 1, 2 plus, let's go t, t1, uh, 2, 4. Okay? Then I'm going to have another line, let's say x, y, and it's going to start at a different point like negative 5, 3, and it's going to go at negative 1, 1. Okay? Now what we want to do is we want to see where they intersect, right? Okay, so um, to intersect, let's say they intersect at, let's see, we're going to set x equal to 1 plus 2t1, y is equal to 2 plus 4t1. So then if you have those two and you want to see where they intersect, well, if they're going to intersect at the same time, let's say that they're going to intersect at point, oh, let's say 5, 6. That's where they intersect. Okay. So what you would do is you would set this x equal to 5 and this y equal to 5 or 6. And so 5 minus 1 is equal to 2t1 and 6 minus 2 is equal to 4t1. All right? You see what I'm doing? Okay. Now, if you look at this, though, 4 is equal to 2t1 and 4 is equal to 4t1, are those times going to be the same? No. They're going to intersect there, but it's going to be like this. They're going to have an intersection place, but it's not the same time, so they'll, they won't collide. The idea is, is you know this intersection, and then you see if the t is the same. And if it was the same, then you could say they collide. Where they collide, yeah. So then what you do with that is something entirely different. So what you do with that is this is where we get our two parametrics. And we'll get x equal to negative 5 minus t2. And we get y is equal to 3 plus t2. And then we set x equal to x. And you'll get 1 plus 2t1 equal to negative 5 minus t2. And then you go y equal to y. And you're going to get 2 plus 4t1 equal to 3 plus t2. And now you have to do those two equations and two unknowns. Solve this one. Probably the easiest would be to solve for t2 here and then plug it in here and solve for t1. Then how do you find the intersection point? There you found the times where they're going to intersect. How do you find the intersection point? Well, you put it into the point generator. Once you know t1, once you know t1, then you can, let's say this was 5. So then you put it into the xy generator. 1 plus 10 is 11. 2 plus 20 is 22. That's how you find the point. So the point is different than the time. Yes? So then if the times were different, maybe this first red one left at an earlier time than this one did. Like two ships, one leaves an hour later. That's kind of what you're dealing with with those. Yeah? If you... Uh, 
It could be. It's unlikely that it would. But um, we're not talking about, um, we're talking about two different things because in the previous example, I gave you the intersection point and we saw um, what time each one would take to get to that point. And if they're different times, they don't collide. In here, what you're doing is you're trying to find the two times that will make them collide at the same point. Does that make sense? So each they will collide, yeah. So this situation, they're going to collide at the same time. The other one, you're trying to see if they are. A little tricky. I'm so glad you asked that one. That's a, that's a really good topic. Uh, how are you doing with any other topics? I know intersection was the hardest one. Yeah. Excellent. Velocity vector and speed. Okay. So um, with that one, what I did is here's the equation of the line. Who is the center of the universe in here? Evan was. Zero, zero, zero. The center of the universe. This line, whatever this line is, we are getting from the origin, zero, 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 we're getting to that line, x, y, z. That's a point on the line from the origin. That's what this is, any point on the line, only the points on the line. These are line points. Okay. Now, to get there, we're going to do it with two vectors. One is from heaven, the center of the universe, we're going to get onto the line by way of a point, x0, y0, z0. Then we're going to go in some direction. This is like vector A and this is like vector B. Some direction vector here. And the number of direction vectors will get me to this. Okay, so we have the point x0, zero, y0, zero, z0, zero. then you're going to add uh, the number of steps. Usually we call that time, t, and then you have a, b, c as your direction vector. So highlighting these, this is your point on a line, any point. This is your starting point, and this is your direction vector. Now, your question is, what's the difference between direction vector and velocity? Okay. Well, this, is that what you were asking? Velocity vector, yeah. This is your direction or your velocity vector. And we know it's a velocity vector because what's velocity times time or meters per second times seconds? What's that equal to? Distance, good. Meters, right? So this here, this is distance, this is distance, this is distance. So you can say distance equals distance plus distance, right? That makes sense. That's why this has to be a velocity because this is time. Everybody clear on that? That's the hardest part. Now, if we want to find out what this velocity, this is the direction. If we want to find out how fast it is, you use Pythagorean theorem. It's the magnitude. So that's your speed, the magnitude of that direction vector. So this is my b direction vector. It'd be the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. That's your speed. Does that help a little bit? As soon as you look at this as a position, 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 and see with this time it makes this have to be a velocity, I think it makes it easier. Next, what else do you got? Yes. Peter? Nice. Yep, so let's look at the line itself. So we can go to 
when we do the line, we had, let's just make one up, x, y, z. And this is going to be um, 2, what's your favorite number, Annika? No, really? 6? Well, that's good. And uh, Ryan, what about you? Um, oh, thank you. You didn't go with a big, mean, nasty number. Plus, and, uh, huh? 52. There you go. Now you're talking real numbers. So let's go um, lambda, and then we'll go 52, 0, and uh, 8. Okay? So what we're trying to do, oh, I don't want this to be 0. That'll confuse us at this point. Let's, let's use um, Lindsay's favorite number. All right, so here's the line. This is what we call vector form. Okay, the vector form has vectors in it. This is my line, any point on the line, point plus step times direction. Okay, now Cartesian was our favorite, or I mean uh, parametric was our favorite. How do we do that? Yep, we just break that down into x equal to 2 plus 52 lambda and y is equal to 6 plus 7 lambda, and z is equal to 4 minus 8 lambda. And then all you have to do to get to Cartesian, Peter, is what? You remember? Anybody remember? It's all right here. What do you do? Solve for, for lambda, yep. So you get x minus 2 equals 52 lambda divided by 52. Uh, y minus 6 equals 7 lambda divided by 7. And then um, z minus 4 equals negative 8 lambda divided by negative 8. So you're going to get your final answer, x minus 2 over 52, y minus 6 over 7, and z minus 4 over negative 8, because these lambdas are all equal. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you said that again, r equals? Up being like 4x 